Okay, hello and welcome to this video about pinning in Blender. So I'm going to add a new cube as is the Blender way and I will just go into UV editing mode and you can see that it's already pre-unwrapped. So I'm just going to do the examples on this basic shape to just show um, how some of this works. There's some common scenarios that pinning appears in, but to be honest, I didn't use pinning at all uh, really for a long time. Um, I mostly would just stitch things, but there's definitely scenarios where stitching isn't going to work. Um, so we'll have a look at some of those and we'll model as we go along um, just to so show how these sort of issues can appear. Um, so this is already unwrapped, so I'm going to use um, seams from islands to make sure that I'm unwrapping this uh, again. So if I do just unwrap it again, it's going to move and not be uh, in that location. But if I just pin with P, um, some of these vertices to the side, um, which, yeah, this, if I turn screencast keys up again, I think it should appear in this now. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah. So when I pin it, just even one vertice in this case, because it's perfectly unwrapped, it's not going to warp. But if I had something that was, if I had something on here that's just really messing up the shape, um, then unwrapping again is going to cause things to, to, to squash in ways that you might not necessarily want. So when you're thinking about pinning or unwrapping things, you can see that I've actually messed one up there by just uh, sliding the vertice because it's, it's recognized that it needs to move the UV space uh, by sliding. Um, but if I just undo that and just move it normally on the X in this example, so that the UVs have stayed the same, and again, if I unwrap this, it's going to get warped and out of shape. Well, the obvious first per, uh, use for pinning is if I've already got a shape that's unwrapped and I'm adding detail to it or I'm moving it around, I don't potentially always want this to be, um, to be warped out of perspective. Um, even though right now my UVs technically would not be ideal. Um, so let's just see that with a material. For some reason that's quite slow on my computer. Much slower than it really should be. I've got a good... Uh, oh Jesus, okay now we're in a loading mode, yeah. I've got a good CPU and I've got a good GPU, plenty of RAM, and yet that just took, that was random, okay. Um, so let's just go with base color as image texture and new and we'll go with uh, just a UV grid. Material preview. Yep, so I've messed up UVs and, and so that's this isn't ideal. Um, but if I did want to retain this UV shape, maybe this is actually a mesh that is um, physically dented, so the UVs would crush in a space where it's been crushed. Um, but I want to, I've added more detail, so I want to unwrap it again. Then the situation you want to be in is basically just making sure that those affected vertices stay how they are. And I haven't done all of them, so this is probably still going to warp those ones in. But let's just see what happens. So it's counteracted that by warping the rest of them outside of the, uh, the pinning space. But this whole thing could be pinned, and then it's obviously not going to move every time I unwrap. So I would be free to, to add details to this. And then we've got a situation here where these faces have not got any UV space because it's been built directly into that. So if just the edges were pinned and we unpin those ones with Alt-P, then now if I unwrap this, um, oh, sorry, yeah, they're probably still pinned. So let's just unpin those ones as well and see what happens. So I've unpinned all the ones related to that. And now again, the shape is warped, so that's not going to unwrap perfectly um, due to the, the warped shape that I've added, but you can see how it has uh, filled in those uh, that hole with UVs in a way that hasn't affected the rest of the mesh. And that's the most basic style of pinning. 
Um, if I have another situation here with a plane, and this might be a common scenario, if I just turn on face orientation, yeah, because we flip the other way, um, and I just try and add a, a basic, uh, I mean, this could be something that's booleaned, but if I add a, a doorway, so it's potentially some kind of doorway, and it's all going to be made out of the same material, so whatever it is could be just like concrete or painted something or another, um, painted metal for hard surface, all that sort of stuff. I'm going to dissolve them for now, just to make it a little bit easier. I've got a bevel on it. So I've got this basic doorway, and I'm going to triangulate it just to make it a little bit more obvious. And you see how the UVs are totally messed up. I mean, it's tried to keep things where possible. But the main thing that's going to remain is that plane that we originally had. Um, so if I unwrap that just as is, just to fix it. Now we've got that, but if I unwrap this as a whole, it's going to start pinching because it's warping it all inwards. So in this scenario, if I just take this and pin that edge, and then right now, if I just actually separate that, because that one can be uh, unwrapped separately. And I mean, you're building a door or something like that. It's going to want to be a separate mesh anyway. So we're not going to consider that in the pinning. So let's just move that out of the way. And then we've got this here. So if I unwrap that on its own, well, it's going to be quite a lot straighter. And you might think, you know, standard UV editing would be uh, Alt V for the for the stitching, but the stitch isn't going to warp the um, the 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 inside edges, right? So stitching really isn't going to work on that because this isn't unwrapped in a way that's the same as the rest of the mesh. So if now if I just unwrap this with the pinned edges, let's just see what happens. Those are going to be uh going outwards because it's compensating still but we know that all of that so if i just press p is exactly how i want it and unwrap again and now when we're, we're not perfect but we're a hell of a lot better in terms of that uv space um than the um than the previous examples so if i just auto smooth that it's fine um then oh so it's not perfect then that's the main situation for pinning that i've been using it for um it, it really works for those curved shapes um so if you're doing like trim sheets which you might want to do with a with something else but if i was doing like a trim sheet so if this has got parts to it that are just extruded and extruded with like i don't know some kind of complex more, more bevels extruded again if you're going to trim sheet this whole thing and let's just ignore the end faces for now and say well we want to add a trim here so unwrap it's all unwrapped straight and we're putting it to the trim i'm going to use the grid as an example so I'm trim sheeting this to the grid, uh, sort of this area here, this this block, and then I want to move the next one. Well, again, it could be a scenario of uh, this scenario definitely the um, the stitching is kind of going to work, but since I've unwrapped them separately and scaled them separately, they've not got the same resolution. And there are things like the texture density where I can take the texture density from this one. So if I calculate text density um, and set the value to be the same as this one, then I can apply that value to um, to this by just setting that. So then the Alt V now is going to work. I just need to flip the islands, and um, but that was all kind of you know in in more advanced scenarios that's going to be a good way of doing a trim sheet like that. 
um, but you could see that it, it required me doing like 10 different things. So I'm going to just look at uh, doing it with the pinning instead. If I unwrap that separately, then I'm not bothered about the text density afterwards because if I just pinned this top edge and then selected the others and unwrap it, it's now going to respect that textile density without having to mess around because it's pinning it and taking that textile density from the from the the edge below and that could be if I've got a separate trim up there obviously if it's not the right scale it's not going to work but that's going to work a lot easier in those scenarios than trying to mess about with some other tools um, so I hope that helps and see you next one